Hello and welcome to week nine, another episode in our series Transformation Dynamics. Today we will talk again about organization dynamics and one of the key points will be about tipping points. Transformation requires not only customer engagement, but most importantly, employee engagement. That is something that we have to keep in mind when we talk about this topic. In the previous episode, in, um, in this category, I talked about the uh, different scenarios that can happen internally in an organization. So while one and the same organization can move uh, down this path here and see a very rapid adoption internally of an innovation, it can also go like this, like the green curve here, or even uh, uh, end in an overshoot and collapse like we see here. So there are different scenarios that can happen and it really depends on how we set up the organization, how we um, orchestrate the changes and how we create the conditions for the transformation initiative to succeed. My name is Thomas Wittig. I'm the CEO at Wittigonia and I will lead you again through the episode today. And so what I have in mind for uh, this chapter is to speak specifically about how to engage and how to mobilize people within the organization. First, I want to start with a short recap. Then uh, I will show a couple of simulations which illustrate the uh, concepts of the tipping point and what we can do about this. And then I will uh, give you some uh, further tools and input for readiness checks and also for coordination. Um, we are here in this roadmap. Uh, this is now the second iteration. Um, the first one was a few weeks ago when I introduced um, the group to the organization dynamics and the change dynamics. So you may want to revisit that. The video, the replay is available on the YouTube channel. As always in the free webinar, we talk about 30 minutes roughly about the concepts and then followed by, by some Q&A time. Uh, and there's also in the live webinar only a, a discount on opportunity for uh, the extended briefings. And you can find the replays on the YouTube channel and also in the Facebook uh, group or the Facebook page, actually, it is. In the extended content, there's a lot more uh, material like uh, simulations, also video briefings with the simulations, group coaching, of course. So if you have specific questions, that's the place where you can ask it and uh, also tools and templates and so on. The YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com with Egonia. There you can find the replays and some further material and the Facebook group is Dynamics of Transformation. The extended content can be found in the academy.wittigonia.com website and there you want to, uh, want to take a look at this item here, which is the extended briefing center and there you can see the full uh, curriculum and uh, all the things that are coming up. So let me start with a recap. Uh, we started out with this um, idea of the transformation dynamics framework, uh, which includes the customer perspective, of course, uh, the new product development, the organizational dynamics, and of course, things like supply chain, the customer base and the market dynamics. We then um, went a step forward and said, OK, what does the basic feedback structure look like? And so we sketched out this um, thing here, which uh, shows uh, a, a feedback uh, loop system of causal feedback loops. So, for example, uh, with the organizational support, we can allocate more developers, which drive more innovation, which then um, leads to more perceived progress. And then that secures more organizational support. But there are other feedback loops here as well. And then our next step was to turn that into um, a set of sectors that we specifically looked at. So we started out with the market dynamics and I explained uh, the reasons for the growth, the S-shaped growth curve. Uh, we talked about customer migration scenarios, project dynamics, and of course, organizational dynamics. And I also folded in some consideration about supply chains. So when we have to um, engage people, for example, or when we have to ship uh, uh, goods uh, in, into the marketplace. So that, that's a topic that will come a little bit later. How does innovation get adopted and how does it uh, get adopted internally? That's a more specific question in this context. 
And then we, we looked at the, um, the, the basic feedback structure. So, um, of course, the, the number of people who um, adopt our um, innovation is a matter of the inflow into this pool of people and uh, the outflow. And the good news is the more people we have in the pool, eventually the more we will get in the pool through the word of mouth. But there might be a delay in that, of course. And there, there are factors which also influence these flows. The outflow, for example, people leaving could be um, triggered by quality issues, staffing issues, etc. So while this is a, what we call a, a reinforcing positive feedback loop, this is a balancing feedback loop, which leads this pool of uh, people actually to, to drain over, over time. That's the basic feedback structure. But then we, we were interested in, okay, what does it really look like in reality? Well, we, we have a pool of potential adopters, which uh, through testing is uh, becoming a, um, let's say, a trial adopter. So they try the innovation then they adopt it for good. And eventually some of them might relapse into the old way of doing business. So they get stuck here in this old way of doing business. Could also happen here. So people who tried it, not adopting it, etc. And so when we simulate that, uh, and of course I, I built a, a simulation model around this so that we can play with the different scenarios and get a better understanding of the dynamic consequences of our uh, programs and decisions. And so when we simulate it, we can see how the, um, first of all, the, the pool of potential adopters is um, uh, going down over time. And then because uh, more and more people are adopting it, but eventually this is also dying down and uh, the, the uh, number of people adopting the innovation uh, would look something like this. And uh, also note that this also looks fairly like an uh, S-shaped growth curve. Now, then we went a step further and uh, looked at the, uh, the critical moments of transformation, which uh, uh, I described in a, in a separate session, so you may want to go back and revisit that session. What I would like to cover today, uh, based on this um, tool set of, let's say, dynamic simulations and system uh, uh, visualizations, I want to talk about this notion of tipping points. And again, keep in mind, so this is, this is our idea here, so that we have uh, let's say the people who are not yet settled on the on the innovation, so they are concerned with the legacy business. And on on this side of the business, we have people who are more in the uh, uh, innovation scene. So they have adopted this solution. And you can think about this that this whole system may lay on on a kind of a teeter totter. And on one side is legacy, on one side is new. And if there are more supporters for the legacy business, then it's tilted towards the legacy business. But if we win more and more adopters of this um, of this uh, innovation, then we can uh, shift the the business towards the the new business. And eventually, if we have majority of people in that end, then uh, the business is is going forward, and more and more people are using the uh, innovation. Now, having said that, the, the interesting point is, of course, what happens when it's like an equilibrium? And that could be an interesting point, because if the business is getting stuck at that point, then uh, you have to deal with, an, an, let's say, an old part of the business and a new part of the business. And both of them require resources, attention, and so on. So that's, an, most, in most cases, a fairly undesirable uh, situation. And so when can this happen? And here in this simulation, I played a little bit with this um, this lever for management commitment. And you can see that uh, the management commitment is actually not taking completely off, but at some point in time, it reaches an equilibrium. So the organization is actually really stuck here in the middle and it doesn't move anywhere. Well, eventually it starts to move a little bit. So uh, that's a little bit of fine detail here, but that's really what we want to avoid. Now, interestingly, when you, you change that a little bit up and down, what happens is if you change the commitment down, again, the, um, the, the tipping point is actually uh, not, not reached or the, the system is not surpassing the tipping point, And so the innovation is dying down again. But if you increase the management commitment, then of course, um, what we expect to happen it materializes here and the business is moving towards the, the new equilibrium, which means that it's adopting the innovation. Again, on this chart, we, we're showing here the time axis 
and here the fraction of people adopting the new innovation. Now, management commitment, of course, is one way of thinking about this, but you can also play with the, the contact frequency. So again, if you go back to the model, you, you, you remember we talked about uh, the, the internal word of mouth. And so the more um, people talk about the innovation and the, the more sticky it is or the more, uh, let's say, infectious it, the idea is, the more the word of mouth can uh, evolve over time and <clears throat> the same thing could happen here so here I set the the system in a way that it also catches some kind of an equilibrium here now uh, in reality this is a fairly sensitive point of course and um, it happens in some organizations that the organization does get stuck but what happens most of the time is that it's uh, gravitating towards one or the other end and so what I did here in this simulation is I changed only very uh, uh, insignificantly almost the contact frequency by plus minus 10%. So the blue line is the organization reaching this kind of an, a dead point or the equilibrium. And then I changed it, uh, the contact frequency down just by 10 percentage points. And uh, what happens is that the innovation momentum is dying down but if i change it up to 10 percent then suddenly it increases and there you can see that this is an interesting point of instability of the system and once we can overcome that point of instability and and push or pull the system in in another direction then it reaches a new cruising altitude if you want so that's an important insight here now, if we compare these two uh, situations, you can also see that they are not equal. So they don't follow the same, uh, let's say, path here. So while the, the uh, tipping point for the management commitment is reached uh, in, let's say, kind of in a different time frame, if you want, uh, it also happens for contact frequency, the tipping point. So that follows a, a different trajectory. And that's important to understand because here we have uh, also different levers that we can play with and we can choose uh, let's say our policies or interventions based on the uh, let's say the impact but also based on the timing right so that's an important thing that we have to keep in mind now what does it mean in real life for our transformation initiatives uh, with, uh, um, with a focus on organizational topics. Number one, understanding the feedback structure of the organization is really vital. And really understanding the tipping point uh, for the transition is vital uh, too. And this can be impacted by different factors and levels as we have seen here. There are probably more that uh, I haven't identified yet, but that's an, an important work that we typically do with organizations. Then, Number three, a small change can decide between making or breaking the transformation and transition. It's very important to keep in mind. So a small change, for example, in contact frequency, and that's something that we can manage, that we can influence, um, is uh, making a, a big impact and it can decide if the system is taking off or the innovation is taking off or if it's not taking off. And both the push and pull strategies need to be considered for such an innovation transformation. Now, uh, the, the, um, the, the interim uh, conclusions here are, uh, first, it's important to measure the sentiment and activity in the organization so that you have, let's say, more frequent feedback of what is the state of the the mindset, what is the state of the adoption. Secondly, important to get in touch um, with the people. So uh, people should get in touch with each other, uh, predominantly with the adopters, if you want to drive the new innovation, and they, sh uh, they should have also an opportunity to engage with the new innovation. And that can be done, for example, through innovation labs or workshops, uh, internal beta tests, um, uh, disseminating success stories through testimonials and also, of course, um, setting the management objectives uh, with smart goals and incentives is really important. And last but not least, the uh, allocating the resources towards the behavior that you want to see and towards the activity that you want to promote. Now, of course, in this simulation, we, we assume that 
um, the quality would be okay and, and everything else would be okay. Um, but uh, still, in many organizations, we see that the innovation is not taking off. Now, if you want to learn more about this uh, topic, there are uh, simulations, uh, video briefings, tools, etc. in the extended workshop. Uh, and as I explained uh, before, you go to academy.wittigonia.com and there you can find this icon here, which uh, points you to the, uh, uh, the briefing. Now, um, there are also a number of um, online simulations. So there's one about uh, market dynamics, project dynamics, migrating the customer base and so on. And the new edition will be about the uh, organizational dynamics. Uh, and here you can see a short snapshot where you can have the, the, the sliders that you can play with. You can set up your own simulation, save and run it, and then compare the different runs and see how it, they play out. And the reason why I put together this format is that of course, not everybody is uh, uh, even aware of, let's say, system dynamics modeling. And so I made it a bit easier for everybody to uh, play with the models. And again, you can find that in the extended uh, work. I want to spend a few minutes on the uh, readiness topic. Um, so when you're planning for a transformation initiative, it's of course important to have the organization and the people ready for it. And this is not about funding and technology, really. It's more about really understanding the organizational specific requirements on the different levels and um, also uh, to distinguish between the organizational readiness and the individual readiness. So on the organization readiness, for example, we can uh, work with a 360 intake workshop, for example, where we take a look at um, the degree of readiness in the areas of products and services, and the market, the organization, uh, people, the incentive systems, uh, and so on. And that gives us important information uh, about existing gaps and uh, key strategies that could be uh, followed and projects that need to be selected in order to get the organization going on a transformation initiative. And of course, it helps to identify areas where learning experience help the organization to uh, get into action mode. And it's about, for example, dashboards. So um, in typical 360 degree workshops, we, we also do it in a business review format. And there we can see what kind of information the organization is currently looking at. And uh, that's a good way of optimizing things, of course. Now on the individual level, one way to do it is uh, to uh, take a look at job specific uh, role requirements and uh, also understand better how, how far people along with the new requirements, the new skill set and competencies that are required and uh, what is their degree of understanding uh, of leading and contributing to a change and transformation initiative. And, you know, with such an uh, engagement survey, we can also surface uh, new ideas and challenges which have been hidden in the organization. And based on that, uh, what we then do is des uh, designing a learning roadmap so that people get uh, more um, up to date and up to speed about the new concepts and uh, also honing the system uh, leadership skills, of course, so that they be become uh, aware, um, are able to apply the concepts and, and lead projects, but also act as an internal coach to build up further capabilities in the organization. Again, there are a couple of examples in the um, extended uh, session. Uh, most importantly, an organizational survey, which you can take, and also an individual survey. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about orchestration uh, and coordination. So the question here is how to coordinate a transformation initiative. And depending really on the level of complexity and the risk involved or the impact involved for the organization, it is important to put a certain level of coordination and orchestration in place. And there are different approaches. You can follow a top-down or central, centrally driven approach or grassroots driven uh, effort. You can do a classic waterfall initiatives in development or agile and lean development. 
but uh, you can also do it yourself or consider to bring in uh, external experts to, to help you with a certain aspects, for example, for development activities and, and coaching and whatnot. Now, what is really required um, uh, at a minimum is a, a certain level of coordination. For example, you may want to put together, want to consider putting together a, a program office and uh, a change team which is leading the effort. Um, but also it's important to have a certain cadence uh, by which the, uh, the the team players are reviewing constantly the progress of the business and the projects and uh, get more insights from the analysis and reporting. And it's important to uh, build the capabilities for that, of course, and not only the reporting capabilities, but also to really understand what is the meaning what do we see in the uh, in the numbers what do we see in the market reports etc now i want to talk uh, a little bit uh, about um, an example uh, it's actually a, a generalized example um, but based on a, a number of projects that uh, we find in the real world so let's say we have a, a simplified organizational setup with a, a c level team so uh, ceo cmo etc cfo and we have staff functions and then we have our, uh, let's say, divisions or delivery units in sales and marketing, research and development, customer success and support. And now, um, as a starting point, what you can do is, of course, establish a transformation program office. And in some cases, it's prudent to bring in an external uh, person for that. In most cases, it's uh, good to staff that from people from the, the own ranks. And that uh, could be, for example, a strategic assignment um, that is also maybe part of a learning experience or the de development effort in the organization. Then another ingredient is the uh, the level of executive sponsor. So this is a group of people typically on, on the, uh, um, let's say, the, the top executive level. Uh, and the people are, are sponsoring certain initiatives, stay in touch with the, the teams and make sure that they have appropriate resources and don't encounter any roadblocks. And then uh, on the more the doing level, we have a leadership team, cross-functional group of people in the various organizations. And uh, what most uh, organizations now do is also put together growth teams. So here you have a cross-functional teams of, let's say, uh, product designer, user interface or user experience designer, uh, development managers, developers and people from customer support, field sales and so on. So that's an important ingredient. And most organizations have not uh, uh, seen that as a priority and you can see from those organizations who have implemented growth teams and adopt the growth marketing mindset and, and the growth hacking mindset if you want they make more progress because they get more traction in the marketplace and then that has repercussions to the entire organization. But it's also important to have, as I mentioned before, a cadence, a rhythm of the business by which we are reviewing uh, projects and so on. So one is on the, uh, the project level where the team has a, let's say, a certain agenda with a clear accountabilities, etc. And uh, the, the next level would be on the business level. So where we not only reviewing the, pr the projects, but also the impact on the various areas such as sales and marketing, the financial impact, uh, competitive impact, etc. And th these need to be um, uh, interlinked, of course, and cascading, which means that there's a, a certain logic behind it. So if, if you want to know more about this, um, there's more uh, content available again about, uh, for example, the the review cycles and also what should be on the dashboard, specifically if you're uh, moving towards a, a software as a service uh, uh, oriented business model, etc. So that's also what you can find in the extended course. Now, uh, let me come to conclusions today and uh, give you a, a short uh, 10 point checklist again. Now, what we, we heard is uh, employees and customers need to be engaged. It's not only about customer experience and customer engagement. 
it's equally important to engage the employees in the organization and sometimes even the um, the stakeholders in the ecosystem, such as your your key partners in the ecosystem or your, your co-innovation partners or your vendors in your supply chain. Secondly, adoption of innovation. Uh, the process has a certain tipping point and we need to understand when does it come uh, what what can we do about it and and how do we push and pull the um, the system uh, over this uh, tipping point so that the innovation can take off it's important to determine these tipping points because they decide about relapse or, or collapse or uh, the progress of the initiative and for that coordination and new capabilities are required again a couple of ideas identify the feedback structure understand the key levers uh, and the, the tipping points. So the levers, we mean the uh, the factors that impact the tipping points and uh, how to work with that. And what, what is the, um, let's say, the uh, appropriate timing and, and uh, intervention policy for that. The implementation uh, requires an effective coordination. So you may want to consider a, a program office or other means of uh, coordination. And uh, it is Im important to align the, the structure towards the uh, transformation. Um, you, you really do want to avoid that this is perceived as a yet another initiative which will go away. So it has to become of a part of the DNA, part of the fabric of the organization for it to succeed. Then uh, uh, predominantly on the leadership level, it's important to build new competencies and new skills to deal with uh, designing and leading complex systems. So here we talk about VUCA, for example, the acronym stands for vulnerabilities, uncertainties, complexities, and ambiguity. And uh, that's something that we address also here in this briefing series, where you get a better sense uh, of the complexities and you, you advance your system dynamics or system leadership mindset. Um, and then it's important to establish a, a learning culture, which is reviewing and revising um, and going step by step forward and implementing the new insights. So coordination, building capabilities and building a cadence is important. Make sure to have a, a KPI dashboard. I talked about that in another briefing series about the strategy topic. So you may want to uh, revisit that um, later on. And uh, consider agile development in the new product or new service development and maybe even in other internal areas. So, for example, when you develop internal systems or processes, uh, this is pretty much the standard today and uh, you uh, will see great benefits from that for sure. And then, as I explained on one of the, um, the, the charts here, um, think about the growth team. So what should be the composition of the growth, te growth teams? How do they operate? Um, who, who do they uh, report to? Where do they get feedback from, etc. Uh, more about this in the extended module. And um, I would encourage you to join the online briefing series. Uh, of course, this uh, series is also available as an on-site um, workshop for companies who want to explore this in more depth and want to understand their specific transformation initiative. The links are shown here. So the YouTube channel is uh, YouTube slash uh, Ritigonia, Facebook.com Dynamics of Transformation. That's where you find the, the page for it. And you can also go to the academy.wittigonia.com uh, website and there you you can follow this icon here which leads you into the briefing center there's a, a whole curriculum laid out that you can uh, see and and uh, take a look at before you sign up um, and this course is also available as an in-house uh, workshop all right so i want to uh, cover a couple of uh, questions um, feel free to ask questions uh, when you're attending this live uh, webinar or also post the questions in the Facebook group. Uh, and when you sign up for the live webinar, you also have a chance to submit your questions uh, up front. So I want to start with a couple of those and then take some live questions here. So uh, one question was about the um, uh, impact on development. Um, this actually turned out to be a, a key topic when we did the uh, the audience survey uh, a few weeks ago or a month ago already. 
So the question is how to develop new products and services. And of course, there's a key dependency because if your organization is not committed, not aligned and not pushing forward with the transformation, then uh, of course your development project may slow down. You don't see the progress and that kicks you into an unfavorable uh, and a vicious feedback loop. So um, this is a topic we will take a, a closer look at uh, in the next uh, stage when we are combining the different uh, sectors and we see the repercussions, for example, between market development and organization, right? So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, some questions here. So uh, one question is about the workshop. Um, where can we uh, find and, and request such a workshop? You just go to the website. Uh, it's uh, wittigonia.com or wittigonia.net, either one works. And there you can find the contact information uh, or and email or, or phone number. So just give us a ring. Um, secondly here, um, why do people disengage? Well, it can have various reasons. Um, you could think of, uh, for example, there could be a quality issue with a new product or um, with the, uh, the new solution. So people would gravitate towards what they have, what they sold in the past, what they implemented in the past, etc. So that could be one scenario. Another one could be unfavorable market feedback. So while you, you still have developed your product as it was designed, by the time it reaches the market, the market has moved on uh, and what, what you have uh, planned is actually obsolete. And that is uh, also um, causing some disruption there in this uh, project. Or uh, it could be a different scenario where uh, people receive the information about the progress with um, a big delay. So that uh, is also a scenario. And I believe we covered that in one of the previous um, uh, video briefings and I did a simulation about that. Uh, if not, I will check and then I will uh, do it again in the extended uh, version here. So th that's an important point because uh, again, it's all about the management system behind it and what you need to do in order to make sure that people have the information and they, um, the, um, the adoption uh, process can kick in. Um, so somebody here was interested in the uh, online simulation. Yeah, I mentioned I, I put together online simulations um, and you can find this in the extended uh, briefing session. I may actually make one or two available for uh, for you. So there's, uh, for example, in the market dynamics uh, section, there are actually already two simulations and I might make the first one available public so you can get a better sense of what you can do uh, with the, the simulation. Um, in the briefing center, um, over time, there are more and more, uh, let's say, learning exercises, which lead you actually to develop um, or kind of put in simply different parameters and then they can explore the different uh, outcomes. And the interesting part is that you can play with one and the same system, but it can produce different outcomes, just like in the real world. Okay, um, yeah, so that was pretty much it uh, here. I think the other topics I pretty much covered uh, during the uh, presentation today. And um, again, uh, always feedback is welcome and please uh, share the episodes in your network. And I'm looking forward to welcoming you again for the next episode when we talk again about new dynamics. Um, and there's uh, another topic coming forward about supply chain dynamics, which uh, I think is uh, really relevant for a lot of people. So good luck with your transformation initiative and uh, see you soon.